Hey guys. <clears throat> Hi. Hello. 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 Uh, please confirm if the if the audio is all right. Can you please hey confirm? <clears throat> Hi. Hello. 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 Hey guys. <clears throat> Hi. Hello. 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 Can you confirm if you can hear me? strange strange times right last two three days before the exam we kind of learn we kind of learn something something about ourselves in these times thoda there's a little bit of little bit of fear uh, you know stress worried uh, but maybe maybe also a little excited uh, maybe thinking you know maybe you have some plans on what i'm going to do after the exams you you kind of learn a lot about yourself in these times all right so we have uh, i'm not going to take a lot of your time uh, here's what i'm going to do i've prepared a checklist right which i want to take you through i want to discuss uh, two things one i want to discuss the checklist which cf institute might have already shared with you but uh, but i'll 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 still do it once my way i'll share all the important things that we need to carry with ourselves and some of the basic checklist then the second part i want to talk about the the exam strategy i want to talk about mindset uh, in you know in terms of how we want to approach this right so it's going to be a little bit of both then the last 5 10 minutes i'll stay back Yeah, uh, it's anyways ten 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 in the night. क्या काम है इसके बाद रे? There's not not much to do, so I'll stay back. I'll answer your queries if you have any questions or if you have anything on your mind. Uh, you can you can ask me and I'll try and answer them for you. All right, so let's start. Uh, let's start doing the the checklist first. So give me a minute. Okay, here we go. Now I prepare a checklist in terms of. what what is it that we need to do and what is it that we need to carry to the exams right a little bit of both the first thing uh, that we want to do is we want to ensure that your name on the passport okay uh, is matching precisely with the cf institute records every exam we end up having you know few candidates uh, you know who received this uh, emails from cf institute saying your your uh, records are not not matching with your passport and you know all those issues come up at times some candidates uh, are required to spend additional time on the test center because those that data doesn't match so that's your step number 1 it does not take more than a minute right so open your cf account open your keep your passport open make sure that it's matching precisely now i have prepared a documentation uh, again Uh, taking relevant section from the CFA website in terms of what do we mean by matching precisely? So what needs to match is two things: your given name and and the surname, right? That needs to match precisely as it is. What you do not have to add uh, is your father's name or your family name section from the passport, right? So what I'm trying to say here: if your passport has a section on father's name, family name. you don't have to worry about that you need to worry about two things you need to worry about given name and surname uh, it needs to match precisely uh, of what we have in the passport and what we have in the cf institute records okay so get that done get it out of your way does not take does not take more than a minute but you know get done with it once and for all what else do we need to take on the exam carry a mask uh, you know covid is still there uh, mask is required it's a it's a requirement i've heard from candidates that they do have some extra mask on the exam center right so in case if you forget there will be some backup available but why rely on it just purchase you know purchase a mask and carry it with you uh, don't write anything on the mask please just carry your mask and done what else air conditioning on the exam hall some centers i've heard from candidates uh especially some seats right they have this uh, split air conditioning units and if you're sitting right below or right next to the air conditioning it might get 
really cold. Okay, now I'm not saying it's going to be for everyone, but for some of us, it might get really cold. That will make the whole exam experience a little uncomfortable. So maybe it's a good idea to carry, you know, some sort of a pullover or a, you know, maybe a jacket with you, just in case. In case agar bahut hi thandi ho jati hai, in case if it gets really really cold, then at least you you know you have some sort of a backup with you, right? Uh, do you know that you are allowed to? You can take a bag with you. You can keep all your stuff. You cannot take that bag inside the testing hall, but generally they have storages available uh, at the prometric center. So you keep it outside. Don't carry anything valuable, but keep you know your food and all that stuff. You can keep it keep it in your bag, right? So you can carry a layer of clothing. Uh, don't use it, but if it gets too cold, then take the permission from the proctor and then just put it on. All right. Then uh, what to carry? So you're aware that there's a thirty minute uh, window between the two exams, uh, the first session and the second session. For most of us, I'm going to recommend it's a good idea to use those 30 minutes. It's an optional break, uh, but you know, make good use of it. Give yourself a nice, nice break. Uh, maybe have a cup of coffee or you know, get some water or eat something, depending on you know your daily habits and the exam time. Uh, a lot of exam centers will not have water stations or they will not have cafeterias nearby. Plus, you get only 30 minutes. So maybe it's a good idea to carry some, you know, stuff with you just in case the zarurat padta hai. Just in case if you feel I need it, uh, have the coffee and you know water ready. Like if I were to write the exams, I'll definitely carry like a, like you know, gazillion uh, size of a coffee and just drink it all in the break. Uh, so definitely, you know, carry whatever you need. Obviously, you need to take the passport. Here's what CFA Institute says on their website. It says if your name does not match on the exam records, you will not be permitted to take the exam. Why take the risk, right? Just one minute uh, review process, check it and get done with it. The policies are given on their website. I will be uploading this PDF in the description. Uh, you can download. I've copy pasted the relevant policies on page number two. Look it up once. Then there is this thing called COVID declaration form. Again, I've heard from candidates that it's available on the exam center, right? So if it's available on the exam center, that's a great news. Uh, but again, you know, why take the risk? Just take a printout. You must have this must have been emailed to you by the institute. Take a printout, fill it up. You know, keep it ready with you. So you need to carry passport. You need to carry calculator. Again, I'm I'm hundred percent sure you know this, but I'm still repeating. Uh, you cannot carry random calculators to the exam, only the approved one, which is the Texas Instruments and the HP. Most of us have used Texas Instrument calculators, so carry that with you. Uh, and if you're someone like me who can get very easily distracted by the surrounding noise, right? I'm not saying it's going to be noisy, but it could be. Then maybe it's a good idea to simply you you know get some earplugs okay i remember i took my level 1 exams in in kathmandu in nepal and the day i took my exams it was raining extremely heavily it was really really mad rains and that sound you know of the rain was creating a lot of distraction for me so maybe it's a good idea to carry a set of earplugs they are allowed right so this is the essential checklist that i could think of uh Mask, layer of clothing, coffee, water, pa passport, declaration form, calculator, and earplugs. That's it. Then here's the most common question uh, that generally shows up: How about rough work? How about rough work? How how can I can will I be given some sort of a scratch paper or am I supposed to carry it? So generally, uh, they will provide you scratch papers on the exam. And they will provide you a pencil or a pen. I've heard mostly pencils uh, at the prometric test centers. Now, something very uh, interesting I heard from one of the candidate. So this particular individual, uh, she did. She had the first scratch paper. She did a lot of rough work on it, uh, and then the the page got completely filled. So then she wanted a new one. So she went to the doctor or she raised her hand. She said, I need a new scratch paper. A new scratch paper was given to her, but the old one was taken. 
Now, in the later part of the paper, she suddenly realized that uh, she had done some important work on that previous scratch paper, which was required to answer some of the questions. Okay, so you need to be again aware of it. This is a multiple choice question exam. Uh, so just if you do some scratch work, you know, make sure that you put the answer, you know, choose the answer of uh, ABC, whatever you think is appropriate at this point of time. You can always use the flag feature. Right. If you're not sure about an answer, but you've already spent time, uh, pick one of the three that you think is the most suitable. And then, and then later on, and then flag that question. And later on, when you find time, you can always go and revisit that. Okay. But scratch papers are provided, but generally they'll do one, one scratch paper at a time. So Dhan uh, Mirakna, do not write anything that's, you know, valuable because you eventually have to give it back. All right. Uh, what else? Now let's go to exams. You, you know this, there will be a total of 180 multiple choice questions broken down into two parts, 90, 90 minutes each, right? So total 180 questions into 90 minutes each. So two sessions, each session is two hour, 15 minutes. Beach may, there's a small break, right? There's a small optional 30 minute break in between that it's an optional break. You can choose if you want to do it. Now, two hour 15 minutes, you have to do 90 questions in the first session. Two hour 15 minutes, you have to do another 90 questions in the second session. The topics is split at level one. So in the first session, you would get ethics, you would get quant, you would get, you would get economics, and you would get FRA or FSA, financial statement analysis. That's what you're doing in the, the first half of the paper financial statement analysis. Second half of the paper, you're going to do corporate issuers. You're going to do equity. You're going to do fixed income, derivatives, and alternatives. So most of the assets are falling in here and then corporate finance and portfolio management will fall in here. Then the question comes, okay, there is a 30 minute break uh, between the two. We know what subjects will be tested in the second half. Should we revise? And and I used to say that, you know what, don't, don't do that uh, because there's no point. In fact, you know, whatever you revise, you would end up kind of creating more panic for yourself. But over the last 10 years, I've realized that there are some sort of people who find that uh, comfort, uh, you know, during the exam or in this break when their books are open, even if their minds are completely elsewhere. So if you want to kind of look up a few formulas or do something like that, it's okay to do it. But if I had to write the exams, I'd probably, you know, listen to music or do a quick five, 10 minute walk and, you know, sip on my coffee. Uh, that's what, that's what I would do. But you figure out if that works for you. If you want to revise, then carry maybe a couple of papers with formulas on top of it. Don't carry them inside the exam hall, but, you know, keep them with you uh, in your bag outside the exam hall. And then maybe you can revise through them. But this is roughly your structure. Next question, time management. So time management, we have about 135 minutes for 90 questions or two hour 15 minutes for 90 questions. So that gives you a run rate of one and a half minute per question. Okay. Generally on level one exam, uh, especially with CBT, I've not even heard a single instance where people have struggled with time management. So time, there's a reasonable amount of time. We, I think all of us who have put in some time with preparation, we should be able to get through. So, but one and a half minute per question. So how do you build your thought process around it? Like the mental model, the first 15 minutes, you want to knock off about 10 questions. Then 30 minutes, you should be done with 20 questions. Your run rate is every one hour, every one hour in the exam you should be done with 40 questions. If you can do a little bit more, that's an advantage, right? So, so if you could do maybe, you know, maybe instead of 40 in the first hour, if you could knock off 45 or, you know, 50 questions, then the second part, in the second part, you're going to feel a little more comfortable, but that's your run rate. One hour, 40 questions. By the time you reach end of second hour, 80 questions, two hour, 15 minutes, 90. Keep try and achieve plus 20%. Right. Or plus 15%. So maybe, you know, maybe you do 50 questions in one hour. If, if you do that, you would be very comfortable with time management. Some more tips. 
again, uh, I always used to assume that everyone knows this and you tell me if you knew this or not, but, uh, but recently some candidate told me that I wasn't aware of this, you know, till the time I went for the exam. So I thought I'll, you know, cover this today that on the exam is nothing is mentioned right on FRA questions. If they don't mention anything, then your standard assumption is that you have to assume your standard assumption is that you are operating on IFRS. Okay. So for example, if there's a FRA question, let's say something like, how would you treat the uh, interest paid, you know, on the cash flow statement. Now, obviously the answer will vary depending on what you assume US gap or IFRS. Uh, Tell me, how would you treat interest paid under IFRS on cash flow statement? Interest paid on IFRS under cash flow statement. Interest paid on IFRS. <laughs> Trick question. You wasn't expecting that, were you? So you'd you'd either do a CFO, an outflow from CFO, or you would do or you would do an outflow from CFF. IFRS gives you a choice, right? It's CFO or CFF. But under US GAAP, no choice. Under US GAAP, you do CFO. So then on the exam, if the question comes, what do I assume? I assume IFRS. I assume that I'm operating as per the, I'm operating as per the IFRS, all right? Uh, if there's a question on US GAAP, it will be explicitly mentioned that it's a US GAAP. Otherwise, standard assumption IFRS. I know I'm repeating this, but it's important that, you know, it's important that you know this. Then again, this is obvious, but there is no negative marking. So, which means no penalty for guessing. Kuch nahi aara hai, jai mata di karke aao, right? If you, if you feel I have no idea what's happening, then just pick one of the three randomly. You still have 33.33% probability of getting it right. Okay. So, that's also done. Now, how will your, uh, how will your exam format look like? Okay. What would be the overview? So I strongly suggest all of you to go on the Prometric website. They've given you a sample CFA test. It's a simple five minute process. Go on the internet. Let me show my screen to you. Just a minute. Right, so go on the internet and search for go on the internet and search for CFA prometric sample test. Okay, and it should open up a page like this. Open up this page. And it gives you that sample test somewhere here. Yeah, here. So go slightly on the bottom of the page. It shows tutorial. Click on that. It will say, you know, give you some mandatory uh, disclosure and all that kind of stuff. You will say, okay, fair enough, accept. And then a sample paper will pop up. Okay. And then you can click on start the test. Look at this. This is the, this is the user interface, right? You should be able to see this interface. Now I have to choose a, I'm just clicking on a, a is chosen. Then I go on the next one and next one is more of a level two type of a format. Okay. You will not generally not have these pop-ups. I have to choose a. Observe how every time I choose an answer, the color changes, right? Let me go to the next question. You would generally not have these pop-ups at level one. Now here I will choose statement three, but at the bottom of the page, you can see there's a flag, this question button, right? So I'm going to click on that flag and see what happens now. If you can, if I can zoom in a little bit for you, it shows that flag here, right? What is the benefit of this? When I finished all of them, if I just want to go and revisit, like similar to how we have that functionality in the Fintry uh, testing site, right? Same stuff. So I, I go on here and then I can simply, for example, currently I'm on question number 5.1. Okay. And, and I want to quickly go to 2.2. I just click on this. It's very obvious, right? And then, then I can do whatever I need to do. And then once you've done all of this right here at the top, it shows time remaining. It shows it shows finish the test. You finish the test. It will give you a couple of warnings. Like, are you sure? Are you sure? You say, yes, I'm sure. Uh, and then done, right? And then thank you very much. You're done. 
wait for 45 days results will come we'll send you congratulations life sorted okay so that's your that's your uh, overall testing visual in terms of how the overview is going to be it's a very easy interface not, no complications okay now some tips uh, what what is it that you need to be careful with uh, during the exams the first thing is to manage your time well okay i'm kind of repeating this again but it's important i'll tell you why what happens is and this this has happened to me you know a lot of times i remember one particular instance i was writing my frm part 1 exam in in mumbai and uh, there was one question on uh, delta gamma or something like that right some question on derivatives and then i knew how to do it and i you know i started doing it but my answers weren't matching with the four options given and then you know something inside me told me that you know what you want to keep on keep on trying keep on trying maybe you would get it so i kept on i kept on trying i kept on trying uh, and i realized that i ended up wasting a lot of time on that one particular question right and that's going to happen to you as well there will be a few questions where you'd feel you know it will tease you you'd feel like i can do it but you're not getting the answer so what do you do select one of the three randomly whatever you feel is the best guess and then flag put a flag on that particular question and move on and then at the end of the paper if you find time you can go and revisit those questions again all right but do not keep on wasting do not keep on wasting a lot of time just trying to solve the same question and again and again second expect a few unknowns we we call them as what bouncers right sir ke upar se gaya uh so expect a few surprises expect stuff that you've not heard before at all so out of those 180 odd questions that we have there will be one or two questions which could be tested from one single hidden line somewhere from curriculum you would be like you know what what is this i don't know it and it's okay to do it's okay to have that so when you come when you experience when you see some question which looks you know completely unknown you have no idea know that you are not the only one is probably happening to a lot of people okay so you don't have to it's probably happening to a lot of people you don't have to worry about it whatsoever uh, keep your keep your cool you know make your best guess and move on even if out of 180 you find 10 questions like these no problem at all make your guess as long as you do the remaining 170 right you know reasonably right you are still going to get through okay then the third thing during the exam there will be some questions which will be too easy you know to believe like two the questions will be so easy that you probably feel is it really that easy or or is there some sort of a hidden trick there i'm not saying all the questions i'm saying a few of them so is it really that easy or is there some sort of a hidden trick a lot of times we second guess ourselves and right? you like you like okay maybe uh there was a simple question on capam formula just you know just giving a random guess now everyone knows capam right the capital asset pricing model you like is this really easy or is this some sort of a hidden trick no it is it is a really easy one okay so expect that there will be few questions where you would be positively surprised you would feel like you know this is a really really easy paper i can i can you know easy easy questions i can get through them uh, fairly easily right okay so these are my uh general tips on what to do what not to do now i'm more or less done talking i'm going to give you a review i'm a teacher so i'm kind of used to revising yeah, so i'm going to quickly give you two minute review on what i discussed uh check the name with the passport uh, carry a mask carry an additional jacket or some sort of a additional layer of clothing carry some food coffee water passport calculator covid declaration form and earplugs if you need them you will be given scratch paper so and pencil so that should be okay to 90 90 90 minutes of two papers these are the breakdown of the subjects your run rate should be 1 and 1/2 minute per question so you want to follow this type of a schedule if nothing is mentioned on the exam we are operating on ifrs so keep that in mind then there is no negative marking if you don't know the answer just make guesses about it 
this is the interface of how the exams might look like. Uh, focus on your time management, expect few bounces on the exam and expect some questions which are too easy. All right. Uh, now I'll start taking a few questions. You can, you can throw your questions on the chat box. I'll try and answer them one by one. But if there's anyone who's writing the exam, you know, two or three days from now or one day from now, and you're wondering how to revise, you know, everything a day before the exam. So my answer to you is don't revise everything day before the exam. In fact, a day before the exam, my humble and sincere request to you is to stop studying by 6 p.m. on the prior day. It's very tough to do. I know it's easier said than done. I know I've myself written a few exams where I've pushed myself late in the evening, but that has hurt me. So, so the best way to deal with, you know, the exam anxiety is six o'clock, seven o'clock, finish your studies, uh, and then go and do something that you like, right? Go and go and probably, you know, play, play a game, you know, play some sort of game or go for a job, you know, go to your gym, watch a movie, do whatever that will completely distract you away from the exams. Next day in the morning, get up, uh, reach exam center on time and write the exam. Just remove the whole emotions out of the process. Please do not try to do late night stunts uh, before the exam. You need to appreciate that CFA exams are a combination of finance knowledge and the aptitude. It's a little bit of both. So if you are not, if you're not well rested and if you haven't slept well, the aptitude part is going to hurt you. You'll not be able to think, you know, with the same velocity, you'll not be able to think with same intensity. So please, please do not push yourself. Trust me. Uh, when I used to go with students to uh, take exams in Mumbai, right? All, uh, all, all the students with me, we used to go together to Mumbai uh, to take the exams from Pune. And then we used to stay together. And then typically, you know, evening before the exam, we used to play cricket on the terrace of the property where we used to stay. Uh, so we used to play cricket till 9, 30, 10 o'clock and then directly go and write the exams. And, you know, it was a fantastic experience for all those people who did that. So schedule something in advance and don't study. That's it. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm answering a few questions from the chat box now. Let me just disable my screen here. Okay. All right. What are the questions? First one is, uh, is there an admit card required? No, there's no admit card. Uh, no such thing required. Carry your passport calculator. The list that I gave admit card is thing of a past. They, they don't have admit cards anymore. Uh, Anupam is asking, are you sure that we have to assume IFRS and not US gap, just confirming, not doubting you, you should doubt me. Uh, there's no problem with that. Uh, but no, I am, I'm hundred percent sure if nothing is mentioned on the, uh, FRA questions, then the standard assumption is IFRS. Okay. So you assume that it's IFRS question and you solve it. I'm, I'm hundred percent positively sure. Uh, Saurabh is asking, what about topics in which we are not so confident? Great question. Uh, I'll tell you something very funny. I've seen this a lot of times when, you know, I have these meetings with, uh, with the students before the exams, right. And they come and they complain. There's always that one or two subjects that's nagging you, right. You feel like, you feel like, uh, uh, right? maybe economics, maybe con, whatever, whatever it is for you. When the results come, that subject is not necessary. The subjects where people have scored lowest. Okay. So, so that's not whatever you think is difficult for you right now does not necessarily mean it's going to be challenging on the exam. So take it easy last two, three days, just do what you can. Uh, in the last two, three days of studies, you should, you should just revise what you already know rather than spending time on what you do not know. So just keep on revising, take it easy. Uh, you have worked hard. You, you know, you'd get the results based on your, you know, based on your efforts, right? So there's no reason to panic now. 
Okay, Hitesh, one two lines of questions asked or big paragraphs. Okay, I'm going to make a guess here, Hitesh. Uh, there's no way you know I would know the precise nature of questions, but my guess is the questions are not so big. So I wouldn't expect like you know uh, a huge novel written inside the question. I'll probably crisp to the point type of questions at level one. They don't mess around too much. So uh, I, I'm not expecting really really large questions. Should this recording be available online? Yes, sir, ma'am. Yes, it should be. Okay, what else? Is track pant allowed during the exam? Harshil, jo penna pen ke jao. Bikini pen ke jao. Koi problem nahi hai. You, <laughs> you wear what you like. Uh, whatever makes you comfortable, as long as you're not making other people uncomfortable, <laughs> feel free to wear whatever you want to wear. Uh, you don't have to dress up and wear a suit uh, for the exams. Uh, just take it easy. Shorts, t-shirts, uh, whatever you like. Right? Whatever makes you comfortable, wear that. Can I chew gum during the exam? Good question. I don't know, uh, Poonam. Uh, but... But what I would do is I'll carry my gums with me if, if I need them and I will check with the proctor uh, if that's okay. I think it will not be okay, but you, you know, you can always check with the proctor. All right, a few more questions. Wearing clothes is compulsory, I suppose. Yeah, it'll be nice if you do that, Karan. Uh, you know, try and wear at least for that one particular day. The the world will thank you for that. I haven't got great scores on the mocks. Worried regarding this. All right. Uh, so worrying. <laughs> and let's let's address that, right? So uh, your your question is Utkash. I'm stressed. Uh, I'm nervous. Very fatraya types, right? Uh, I'm I'm kind of paranoid. What what do you think I should do? So the answer is it's it's a natural thing to happen. Right? We worry about things that matter to us in life. Uh, we don't worry about you know which toothpaste we're going to use tomorrow morning when I'm brushing my teeth. Right? That's not a matter of concern for us. We're like, okay, it's fine. But CFA exams matter to us because we've put in months and months of preparation and a lot of money, uh, expectations, hope. So there will be there will be a little bit of stress there, right? That's that's fine. Now, what we want to learn out of this is we want to learn that skill to be able to handle that stress, right? Uh, for me, I'll tell you what my personal process is that that at least helps me quite a bit. Uh, I've taught myself over a period of time to. Uh, to at least to some extent to kind of detach myself from the results. Because what I've realized is that a lot of things that we do in life, uh, results don't matter as much as, you know, the process. So that, that nervousness a lot of times comes because we are always thinking, will I pass? Will I fail? What will my friends say? And all that stuff. Uh, but honestly, that, that doesn't matter, right? Results, results do not matter. What matters is that did you put in your 100%, the best you could do in your preparation. So just focus on the process. Uh, right now, the more than studying the process, the process for you is getting you know all these things, logistics right. Last one, two days, what, what will you study, right? Revise formulas, look at juice notes uh, or summary notes or whatever you have. But don't worry too much about results. In the long run, results never matter. What matters is uh, what process am I following? Okay. And as long as your process is right, the results will come. Uh, and again, I, I say this all the time. See, at the end of the day, don't, you don't have to be worried. Right? It's not the end of the world. It's, it's not that, you know, if you don't pass CFA exam, your world will be shattered. It's just an exam, right? Uh, it's, it's no big deal. It's, it's like thousand other exams we'll be writing in our lives. Uh, so take it easy. Uh, enjoy the process. That feeling that you have, you know, that nervousness and all of that people pay, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars to get that feeling in their life. Right. It's, this is called excitement. This is life. That feeling is also a part of, you know, who we are. Uh, so it's a natural feeling. Just learn to enjoy it. 
that's it. Oh, thank you, Siri, for your kind words. Uh, are the exams much different than the mocks? Again, how would I know? Uh, but overall, what I've heard from candidates is uh, there are different layering of the questions on the exam. There are some, you know, there are some questions which are a little tough, but I would say about, you know, 10, 20 percent questions are tough for them. Uh, 10, 20 percent questions are tough. 10, 20 percent questions are way too easy. And then, then there are some questions in between, right, which is moderate level. And obviously, level of difficulty is a function of your level of preparation. Uh, and those are inversely related. So when you prepared well, automatically things look easy. So again, uh, you know, don't worry about it. Whatever the exam is, you're well prepared, go and write it, you, you would be able to get through. Saurabh, there were some questions in the learning ecosystem where we had to write an answer and not select an option. Can we expect something like on the exam as well? No, at least, at least not as of now. Uh, no, uh, simple MCQ, that's it, nothing else. Commenting about difficulty is not a violation. Uh, yes, that's correct. <laughs> that's that's correct. I think I I I hope it's not a violation. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. Any tips for ethics question where I'm stuck between two options? That's a great one, Mohammed. See, I had these issues with uh, with ethics as well when I took, and I tell you what, I had issues with ethics in all the three levels. You know, when I took level one, ethics was tough for me. And my challenge was slightly a different level because I, uh, my, you know, English was all over the place, right? I did my schooling in, uh, in vernaculars and uh, my English was really miserable. It's probably still is. So for me, ethics was very challenging at level one. And then, then you know what? I passed level one. I thought uh, level two is the same ethics, uh, how, how difficult it's going to be. Uh, but I still struggle with level two ethics and I struggle with level three ethics. So ethics, the, the thing with ethics I've realized is that you can't really, you know, approach that like a law, right? It's, it's not that you have to basically approach it purely from how would, you know, an ideal, uh, rational economic man. So in the same way, ethical, you know, ethical man or woman, uh, would approach this type of a situation. Uh, in general, if I'm confused between two options, I would generally go with uh, my first instinct. I've noticed that the first instinct generally is the correct one. So, so with ethics, uh, let's say that I read the three options. My initial thought was that B is correct, uh, but I read it again and now I think A is correct. And then I read it again and I think, no, maybe it's B, maybe it's A. Uh, what I would do is I would go and select the one that I thought was correct first. My first instinct, that becomes my answer. And that's what I'll recommend you to do. Uh, if you're confused, go with your first instinct. Another thing I did with my level two and level three exams is I did not review ethics questions. Like, you know, how you finish your paper and you get some time, some time towards the end. Uh, so I made a conscious choice that I would not review ethics question in that extra time because I realized I ended up you know, messing them up rather than improving it. Uh, so ethics just at the beginning. Yep, yep, never read the questions, I agree. And see, it's just just enjoy the process. That's what I'll tell you, right? Take it easy, know, know all the rules, uh, but just enjoy the process. Think of it this way that you have paid, uh, like how you pay for, let's say a skydiving experience, right? Uh, so just think that you've paid for this CFA exam experience uh, and try and have fun with it. And if you pass, you get a nice certificate after it. So that's, that's even better. All right. It looks like I've answered most of the questions. So,
So I'm going to call it a night. What to do in the break time? <laughs> okay, you know what? One more, one more last question. <laughs> okay, Prit. Okay, Prit. I got it. What to do in the break time? Uh, I, I'll tell you what I would do. Uh, I would probably, you know, listen to some some nice music. Uh, in in that window and sip on my coffee. That's that's what I would do. But uh, you can you know revise a little bit if you feel you need to revise and all that kind of stuff. But you you figure out what works for you. I would generally take it easy and not worry too much. Uh, in in that window. Yeah, whatever whatever works for you. Okay, so should I say should I say good luck? Should I say good luck? Do you think do you think that matters? Good luck matters. Yes, yes, it does. Okay, it's it's it does. Uh, saying saying that luck doesn't matter at all is uh, you know is is a little bit of arrogance, I would say. Uh, there is a little bit of element of luck that plays out, uh, you know, on your results, especially with the borderline candidates. So I am, I am going to wish you uh, great luck, and I want to wish you enjoyable experience. Uh, give your best, enjoy the process, have fun with it, and when the results come, do give me a call, WhatsApp me, let me know, uh, and you know, irrespective of what happens, if you get congratulations, fantastic, we'll celebrate together. If you don't, we'll still celebrate together. All right. So with this, uh, thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Good luck. And let me know how it goes.